welcome back to the channel. So somebody asked me to do a video about the actual uh, OBD2 connector itself, the Bluetooth one that I use. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So let's get into it. All right, so this right here is the Carista OBD2 uh, Bluetooth adapter that I use. Um, it's very simple. I mean, nothing special about it. Just a little white plug-in for your OBD2 port and it's powered through your OBD2 port and then it will transmit the signal um, from your ECU over to say your Torque Pro app. So, but this specifically is advertised for their own application so I'm actually going to show you that too. Alright, so if you look here on my phone I've got the Carista app right here. I'm going to open it up. Uh, just let me know there's a new version and at this point let me go ahead and plug the OBD2 adapter back in so that way we can actually go through uh, a little bit of the features. So I'm going to go to my Torque Pro app and close it out just so there's no interference between the two. And I'm going to make sure that it reconnects so that way we can get down to business. Alright, so here we are. Uh, rebooted the app, made sure it was connected. So right here at the home menu you can hit service, customize, or diagnose. Now over here in the main part, this is where you just get like, you know, I don't even know why they put like where to buy, since you figured you probably already bought it, but there's a little place. Uh, then it has like supported vehicles, and it's just going to take you to a website, show you a bunch of the supported vehicles. Mostly, I believe they're uh, European cars, but there could be some domestics in there too, I'm not quite sure. So over here, if I have a check engine light, I can hit diagnose. It's going to connect to my OBD device, and then it's going to sit there and go through. And then actually, it, it takes a little bit of time uh, to do a full diagnostic, so I'm not going to go ahead and do that. But if I hit Customize, and we're going to wait for it to connect here. And this is going to take a minute, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the camera and uh, let it do its thing. Alright, so we're all loaded up. It uh, probably took less than a minute, but I didn't want to have to sit there and let you guys watch that. So... If you look here, I've got options for doors, windows, and my remote, lights, and other. So let's start at the top. So right here, we got open windows via long press on the remote. Uh, that's something that comes standard on these cars, so it's automatically going to be checked yes. But if you just go through this list right here, um, there's a couple of things that are not checked yes from the factory. And these are things that you can actually unlock by using these quick codes uh, provided by Carista. So... You've got things like auto fold the side view mirrors, um, delay the folding, comfort access, um, how many presses you want the driver's door to be opened on on first press and then all of them on the second press. You can change that to just one press. You can also do it for however many key fobs that you have. And then right here you can put like unlock the fuel door when the driver's door is unlocked, um, auto lock doors when the initiative is switched on. Uh, just a ton of things. I mean, there's so many things to go through in here and some of the stuff that I specifically chose um, Was to turn off my daytime running lights. I also uh, Chose to turn on the feature where holding uh, not only does holding your lock button make the windows go up But holding your unlock button makes the windows go down um, So that's the feature that's actually unlocked from the factory is opening the windows with a long press of the remote um, for down now, closing the windows via a long press using your lock button was not, so I turned that on. Now, if I press on this now, and I hit no, it's going to ask me to save. And you see this little, like, lock-looking button right here? Um, what it's actually going to do if I hit this is it's going to tell me to purchase the pro version. So, but I'm going to go back to yes and make sure that didn't actually save. All right, so we're still good. So, it has a lock button next to it basically because... You have to unlock these features by paying, uh, so to speak, for that feature in the app. And what it is, is it gives you the option to pay like $9.99 for a week's worth of access, or I believe I want to say it's like $40 or $50 um, to have a full subscription for a year where you can go in here and change whatever you want. Um, now the diagnostic codes, that's completely free. It'll tell you your diagnostic codes, no problem. Um, but also the Torque app does that as well, so that's what I use that for. Um, I have noticed that the Carista version of the uh, diagnostics seems to be a lot more in-depth than the one in the Torque Pro app, but 
I usually always just use the Torque Pro app unless I feel like it's something that the Torque Pro app is not showing me. Um, then also over here, we're under lights now. We've got daytime running lights. I disabled those. We got cornering lights. Those are disabled because I don't have any. Um, license, you can look at this. You can change your license plate lights as your daytime running light, your side markers, your turn signals, your fog lights, your lane. Uh, over here, you can change how many flashes for your lane change. So I set mine to four because I felt like three was a little, uh, just not enough that you make that full change before they stop blinking. Um, you've got your coming home lights enabled. you got your coming home lights, how long they'll stay on. Um, use your high beams as you're leaving home. Like you can, you can change so many things in here. So I left everything in here as such because I already made all my changes. I just paid the, like, the $10 for the week access and just went in here and changed to everything that I'd actually want um, and left it like that. I mean, I didn't see the need to pay for the year-long thing, um, but I guess if you if you have multiple uh, cars that is adaptable with this, you could uh, theoretically you know, just go ahead and pay for the year-long thing and then you can do it to however many cars you want. I mean, you can do it to your friend's cars, you can do it to your car, it doesn't matter, it's not locked. Um, to your specific vehicle so you can you know keep switching this uh, adapter through as many cars as you want so over here in the other I have engine can be started only when brake is pressed I have that on yes uh, one touch engine start is on yes which is just you know basically if I just tap my start stop button it's gonna keep going until the car actually starts um, but there's a delay so one touch engine start uh, protection stop after three seconds that's what i have mindset to so if there's an issue and my car won't start it'll stop after three seconds so that way i'm not wearing out my starter um auto eject the key when start stop button is pressed and held i don't even know if that works honestly i think you have to manually eject the key in this car uh but it is there as an option um auto eject the key start stop button is pressed and held for blank seconds and lower the passenger side mirror in reverse now i have this one checked to yes but what i notice is mine doesn't seem to work like, I put it in reverse. Let me show you. So we're in reverse. But that mirror didn't move. It's still in its regular position. See? No movement whatsoever. So, I feel like some of these features, uh, you know, maybe they, they don't actually work or they're just there because maybe a different trim level it works on, but it's just there because it recognizes that it's a Mini Cooper. So maybe that works on some of the higher-end models. Now, I do have... The power folding mirrors which i thought would be the only feature that i would really need for this to work um because that's another thing as i turned on the uh auto power fold whenever you you know park the vehicle and that doesn't work either even though i set it to on not a huge deal everything else that i've tried has worked so i'm not really worried about it um but that's basically the ins and out of the carista app and the only thing i want to mention really quick is if you're going to buy this one because you want to do some quick coding but you also want to use it for the tour pro app you have to go through the carista app and connect your device to the carista app first before you connect the device to the tour pro app because um, the only way that you can actually pair this device uh with your phone is through this app you can't just go into you know your bluetooth settings and hit it It'll actually, I think it'll just automatically open the app or it'll take you like to the Play Store or something to open the app. Um, that's basically how you're like registering it, I guess. Um, but that's basically the gist of it. So if I go back to my Torque Pro app, give it a second, it'll connect. I mean, I can go ahead and hit real-time information. It's gonna pop up. I got a new uh, scheme going here uh, since my last video on this app specifically. And uh, this is actually the Mark 7 uh, GTI theme that's in the settings menu. I think it goes pretty well uh, since the color scheme kind of matches with the mini. Um, it's a lot better looking than the other one. So let's see here. If I go to the settings at the home menu, I go to settings, I can click on themes, choose a theme, and it's going to download like a bunch of themes from a server. You can also uh, download themes off of the Play Store. Some of them are free for like a couple of them, and then but most of the other ones you actually like have to pay for. I don't understand why people want you to pay money for themes, um, but that is an option. So it's probably going to take a minute. Oh, let me turn that off. If I turn my Wi-Fi off and actually let it go on 4G, it might 
might be a little quicker. Oh. Choose a the theme. There we go. So my Wi-Fi was connected to something that wasn't really working. So, but look at this. They got Volkswagen MK7 Sport base theme, Volkswagen Polo, uh, retro orange, uh, burnished, burnished glow. <laughs> Uh, Ford B Max, they got a blue, Renault Clio 2, Prius Gen 2, Mazda Speed 6, Mazda Speed 3. Um, just a ton of ones in here. You can go through all of these and kind of select the one that you think is cool. Um, they got a couple that have like, you know, flames in the background of the dial, or they got carbon fiber around the dial, you know, stuff like that. And then you got this old empire. That sounds kind of cool, but I'm going to leave that alone. Then you got the original down there. So let's go back. But yeah, I like this, uh, I like the Mark 7 GTI one. It's really clean, and it's got red needles, and uh, I think that just goes with the flow of the car. It doesn't stick out and look kind of weird. Also, I didn't want to forget. So, I went to Cars and Coffee um, last Saturday, and uh, a guy came up to me, well, a few people came up to me, and they were asking me about my car and how I liked it, um, what I had done to it, and so on and so forth. And one specifically was a guy named Larry, I want to say Larry Wong. I don't want to get that wrong. I'm sorry if I did, if you're watching. Um, but he had mentioned, he's like, oh, hey, you're that guy on YouTube that I saw. And that's kind of how I figured out about this uh, Mount Laurel uh, Cars and Coffee. Like, I saw it on your video, and I didn't know it was a thing, so I came out here to check it out. And, you know, I just happened to be there, too, and he recognized the car from the channel um, and... He put two and two together, so he was like, he's like, oh, you got that YouTube channel, right? And I was like, yeah. And so that was kind of cool. Um, it was actually like my first, you know, meeting sort of a subscriber or at least a watcher um, of my channel uh, in person. That's the first time it had ever happened to me. And I didn't expect it to happen at random kind of like that. Um, so that was really cool. So shout out to you, Larry. Thank you for watching. And uh, I appreciate uh, you approaching me and asking me questions about the Mini. Um, it was nice meeting you, and uh, who knows, maybe in the future we'll start meeting more people. So, I'll see you guys next time. Uh, go ahead, smash that subscribe button if you haven't, and I will see you in the next one.